Hello everyone, I am Randy Suarez, aka Zero Crows, and we're back here with another reaction. This time we're back to some more Jim Jeffries, and the video is titled, <clears throat> Taking a MD Suffer to See a <laughs> Prostitute. Wow, okay. <laughs> Dude, what are you doing? Based on how old this video is, it, it, this is one of his older videos, and uh, that's... I'm curious now. But anyway, <laughs> if you like any... Any of this content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Like, comment, and subscribe to Jim Jeffries. I will leave the I will leave the original link to this video down below in the, in the description. You can watch it uninterrupted. Also, link to my <clears throat> Hell of a Boss reaction playlist. I've been reacting to Hell of a Boss. Check out all my reactions. If you miss them, right there in the reaction link. Just click the link and it'll pop you right there. I'll link to my uh, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can follow me on those social platforms. Also, link to my Cash App. If you feel gracious enough to donate. Five, ten, fifteen dollars. That's fine. If you don't, that's fine as well. Also, you can donate to the super thanks. All this to make the channel grow and let me know yeah, you really rock with your boy. But anyway, further ado, buckle up and let's All get started. Alright, Mr. Jim Jeffries, what wildness, craziness that you got for me, man? <laughs> How many more do you reckon there is behind him? <laughs> He's drunk. There's a dwarf behind there mixing me a cocktail. <laughs> I am fucking drunk now. I... Bro, we can tell. <laughs> you are completely shit faced as of right now. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to tell you a story. This story is very long. The first three minutes of this story are very depressing. All right, I take your word on it. Just hitching up my pants. <laughs> first three minutes of this story are very depressing, but there is a moment where this story takes flight, and you have to hang in there with me until this moment and trust me <laughs> that the story is going to get good. I can't wait. I grew up at number three Taramara Street. Mm. At number five was my two best childhood friends. Andrew and Daniel Connor. Daniel was born with a disease called muscular dystrophy. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what muscular dystrophy is, it's a horrible disease that Very. wastes away at your muscles. It's the same as Lou Gehrig's disease or motor neurone disease, except you're born with it. You get diagnosed when you're about six years old, when you're not walking right, and they put you on crutches. Mm -hmm. By the time you're 10, you're in a wheelchair. By the time you're 20, you're in a completely vegetated state. Oh. Most people die before their 25th birthday. And yeah, having that is very, very, very horrible, you know, in general, so. All right, continue. Dan's lived to be 33 years old, still alive and kicking. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> really? <laughs> still alive. He's still alive. He's still alive, but he's suffering. He died seven times in his life and been resuscitated seven. And I once asked him, I said, Dan, what happens after you die? And he said, nothing. <laughs> so good luck with your religion and your faith. Uh, I'll take an actual statistic. <laughs> now, his family had since moved to Melbourne. I had moved to the Great Britain. I went to do the Melbourne Comedy Festival. This is about a year ago. Uh, I hadn't seen him. In all that time, his brother Andrew came to see my show, mm -hmm. and then Andrew took me to see Dan, and I went in to see him, and I'd never seen anyone live this long with this disease, and he's laying on a bed, his eyelids are a muscle that he can't keep open anymore, and they're just, he's just squinting through these little things, and he has a breathing mask on him to keep his lungs working, because his lungs are a muscle that he can't keep pumping. He has a, a, a heart monitoring machine in case he flatlines in the middle of the night and someone has to resuscitate him. And as soon as I walked in and saw this guy that I used to run around with as a child, I burst into tears. There's nothing worse you can give anyone in this world than pity. Facts. He's speaking facts right now because no one deserves to be pity on. Like, I... Ex okay, the best way I can say this is this. I've been called worthless by people who are supposed to be taking care of me. And this is me as a child. So, one time, a friend called, an acquaintance called one of my closest friends who was like a brother to me, worthless, and I turned to him and got in front of his face. 
I told him, no matter how much he pisses you off, never call someone worthless. Because you'll never know what they're worth. I said that in that tone. And so he was trying to tell me to chill, chill, let it go. No, I will not let it go. Because no one deserves to be called worthless or be pity on. You know, I went in the corridor. I felt like a right prick. Mm -hmm. And I was fucking wiping my eyes off. And I went back in. And I sat with Dan. His brother Andrew went off to work. And me and Dan chatted for a while. 20 minutes into the conversation, Dan says to me, Jim, I'm 32 years old. I've never been with a woman. Will you take me to a prostitute? <laughs> that's a hell of an ask. And that's where the story picks up. Damn right. Because <laughs> I went, fuck yeah. <laughs> and he remember, that's a friend. That's a friend. Don't tell my brother, he wouldn't understand. I said, that's where you're wrong. I have known your brother my entire life. Trust me, he will understand. And against Dan's will, when Andrew came home from work, I pulled Andrew aside and said, Andrew, look, here's the deal. Dan's asked me to take him to a prostitute. I'm gonna do it whether you like it or not, but I think as his brother, you should come along and help out. And Andrew went, we're not doing it. And I went, why? And he went, it'll kill him. And I went, <laughs> He's gonna die soon anyway. This is a good way for him to go. Like, sure, we'll have to answer a few questions. <laughs> It'd be worth. It'd be worth it, man. It would be worth it. Oh, I mean, come on. You don't get that opportunity as, as much. But still. <laughs> And he said, we're not doing it. And I said, why? And he goes, because mum doesn't like you already. <laughs> and I went, your mum's never liked me. <laughs> That's why I'm the right guy to kill your brother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who did it, Jim? <laughs> and he said, all right, we'll do it. But he can't have full sex. Full sex will kill him. He can only have a blowjob. And I thought that was fairly reasonable. Yeah. So we went back in and saw Dan. He was where we left him. And we said... <laughs> Dan, here's the deal. I know you not told me not to tell your brother, but I told your brother, me and him are both going to take you to the knock shop tomorrow, mate. But you can't have full sex. You can only have a blowjob. And Dan went, I want full sex. And his brother Andrew went, Dan, you're in no position to argue with anyone ever. <laughs> Then Dan reluctantly agreed. Now, prostitution in Australia is legal. So I spent the rest of the afternoon going through the phone book trying to find a brothel with wheelchair access. <laughs> uh. Best afternoon ever. Eventually I found one, the biggest brothel in the southern hemisphere, the Daily Planet, or as the Australians call it, Four Floors of Whores. <laughs> it's a 24-hour brothel because Australia is a go-ahead country. <laughs> so we decided we were going to go early in the morning, like real early, like 6 a.m. We wanted to go when the place was quiet and we weren't going to cause a scene. So we wake him up at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's hard to tell if he's awake. And... <laughs> We get him in his chair. Now he hasn't got your bog standard fucking wheelchair. He's got one of those big sort of silver looking things with the truck tires on it. I think the model's called a Hawking. Oh. And <laughs> yeah, right. Even though his muscles don't work, they get sore. So this thing can move him from side to side and back to front and even into a full bed. So we get him in the chair, then we order a taxi. And then, it's not like you have black cabs out there, it's like a normal car, but they've, they've modified the back to go higher, and they drive him up through the boot, and they strap him in there, and he sits up high with windows all around him, like a big <laughs> retarded Pope. <laughs> <laughs> or as the Catholics would say, the Pope. <laughs> Drive off 
to the brothel. Now, when we get to the brothel, it takes 10 minutes to get him off the taxi. I see this as my window of opportunity. So while they're getting him off the taxi, I run into the brothel. Now, there's two ways that brothels work. Either the prostitutes will stand in a row in their lingerie and you just pick the one that you want. Or they'll stand around in a bar in evening gowns and high heels and you walk up to the one that you like the look of, chat to her for a bit, act like you've got some type of connection with an Eastern European woman, then take her upstairs and fuck her if you need your life to be this delusional. <laughs> This is one of these situations. So while they're getting Dan out of the cab, I run into the brothel and go, everyone, quickly, <laughs> gather around. <laughs> I haven't got much time. <laughs> and these 14 bemused hookers shuffle over and I went, look, here's the deal. I have a severely disabled friend with me. If you're not up for it, speak now or forever hold your peace. And one of them went, how bad is he? And I went, <laughs> But that's a friend. That's a good best friend. Pretty fucking bad. <laughs> and 10 of them said they wouldn't do it. And I said, well, I respect mm. that. But can you please go and hide because I don't want him to be rejected by hookers. <laughs> and these 10 girls shuffle away in their evening gowns and their high heels with gonorrhea falling out of them. Oh God! I, <laughs> I am now left with four girls, the best looking one by a mile stays. Dan Wills in, looking like Jabba the Hutt, <laughs> breathing like Darth Vader. Two of the girls run away and I'm like, are you fucking kidding, you sluts? <laughs> I just asked you nicely. <laughs> so we're now left with two girls. The best looking one's there, the other one's a fucking troll. <laughs> now out of respect for the ugly one, I go to Dan, I go, Dan, there's only two girls working today, mate. <laughs> Which one do you want? And he said, the one in the green dress. Now, neither of them had a green dress. <laughs> I stand up and look at Andrew and went, what the fuck is all this about? And Andrew went, oh yeah, his eyes are fucked as well. <laughs> now it turns out that Dan's colorblind. It's not part of the condition, it's just unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. So, I sat with the hooker. Now I'm going to pay for everything. Now the reason I'm going to pay for everything is simple. I told Dan and Andrew that I would pay for everything as long as I got to tell this story to hundreds of thousands of people in the future. Because this is a wild story and people need to hear it as we are watching this right now. <laughs> And they said, of course you can, Jim, but be respectful and change our names. Which sounds like the right thing to do now, doesn't it? <laughs> now, I haven't changed their names. <laughs> their names are Andrew and Daniel Col um, Connor from St Kilda, Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> I would have liked to have changed their names. It is the right thing to do. But I look at it this way. Even if I changed their names and their parents started watching my comedy, they'd be like, my word, doesn't Randy and Steve sound like our kids? <laughs> Didn't Jim grow up with a lot of people with muscular dystrophy? <laughs> I mean, okay, to be honest, he has a point. So changing his name, changing their name, Will be, will probably will be definitely pointless, right? <laughs> oh. So I sat there with a the hooker and I said, how much for the half hour? And she said, 180. And I said, I'll give you 250 because I realize this is a specialty thing you're doing. And she goes, I got one question for you. And I said, shoot. And she went, is he mentally retarded? <laughs> and I went, Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. 
I find mentally retarded people <laughs> and take them to prostitutes. <laughs> I'll be masturbating in the corner. <laughs> he doesn't even know he's here. <laughs> And she went, okay then, but if there's two of you, we'll go, no, he's not mentally retarded. It's his choice to come here. There's a good chance he'll die. <laughs> and she went, what am I meant to do with him? And I went, I don't know. I've never been a hooker. <laughs> but I'm thinking, give him a bit of a show, dance around a bit, rub your tits in his face, then suck him off. But don't sit on him or fuck him. It'll kill him. <laughs> uh. So we go up to the room, which thank God was on the first floor. <laughs> we just imagine carrying that to the second floor. And me and Andrew look at Dan like two proud parents watching our child go to school for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> And then we leave, and as we proceed to leave, I pat Andrew in the back, and I said, Andrew, you've been a good brother today. He said, thanks, mate. And then we had a hug. And then we had that moment after a hug that Australian men have where we go, oh, get out of it, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and then I said, hey, Andrew, how does Dan get his clothes off? <laughs> and Andrew went, fuck! <laughs> and we went back in. <laughs> Andrew looks him up and down and he turns to me and goes, look, he's very fragile. I know how he likes to be picked up. I'll lift him up, you take his pants off. Andrew gets behind, lifts him up by his armpits like I couldn't have figured out their magical hole. I'm on my knees taking Dan's tracksuit pants off. He always wore tracksuit pants, never got into fashion. And as I'm taking his tracksuit pants off, what many of you are wondering is, can Dan get an erection? And the answer is yes. Okay. Even though none of the muscles in his body work, the cock is not a muscle, the cock is a bit of skin that fills with blood. If he gets aroused up here, blood will rush to there. Now, what nobody knew He's about this 32-year-old virgin is that Dan's packing heat. <laughs> I'm talking nine and a half inches of disabled misery. <laughs> this cock's so fucking big, I think that's why the rest of his virgin is that Dan's oh. packing heat. <laughs> I'm talking nine and a half inches of disabled misery. <laughs> God damn. Oh, we go to the extendo. <laughs> so fucking big I think that's why the rest of his muscles didn't work <laughs> I take the pants off this thing springs up and hits me in the mouth <laughs> <laughs> then the hooker goes let's do the light <laughs> let's explain the light when they legalized prostitution in Australia they didn't legalize it in all forms Mm. For instance, you cannot get a street walking hooker, you cannot get a prostitute to your hotel room. You can only go to a brothel in a safe environment where they have security for the girls in case a man shows up being drunk and dickhead or whatever. Yeah. And also, it's safer for the people who go to brothels because the girls get tested for STDs every month. Mm -hmm. So, arguably, you're better off in Australia fucking a prostitute than picking up a girl in a bar. <laughs> But I'm not going to have that conversation again. <laughs> Best night, brother. Best night. Oh, my. <coughs> you try explaining that to a girlfriend. It's a fucking minefield. <laughs> but also, they make it safer for the girls. If you're a guy who goes to a prostitute, you have to undergo the light. Let's explain the light. It's very simple. Sounds like what it is. You put your cock under a very bright light and they look around the shaft to see if there's anything untoward. <laughs> then they get a magnifying glass out, go through your pubes to make sure nothing's running around. <laughs> oh, God. 
It's not a big deal. I've been rejected heaps of times. <laughs> of course, Jim. All right. Now, the chair's here. There's a bed here. There's a hot tub there. The light's over there. Now, we try to get the chair past the bed and the hot tub, but we can't get it through. So me and Andrew walk over the hook and we're whispering because we don't want Dan to hear. And we're like, um, we can't do the light thing. And she goes, if you don't do the light, I'm not doing it. And me and Andrew went, ah, oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> He's a virgin. What's the worst that can happen? And she whispered, actually, I'm more concerned about its cleanliness. That's fair. And here's the thing, that's totally fair. Like, okay, hygiene is important. We can all agree on that. Doesn't matter if you're male or female, it's always important to wash your undercarriage with soap. Tell me how to stress people. Okay, I had, a, I had a friend, even telling him, hey man, because we've been working outside, this is during the summer. I told him, hey, before you come over here, make sure you take a horse bath. If some people don't understand what a horse bath, horse bath is, basically get all the important pieces clean. If you're not going to go straight home. I don't care if you have to use hand soap. Use it. And then his brother Andrew said loudly and proudly, I washed it before we came out. That's a good brother. Now you may think you're a good brother, good sister, good mother, good daughter, whatever the fuck you think you are in this world, but you're nothing until you've washed your disabled brother's cock to take him to a prostitute. <laughs> that is love, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Tangible fucking love. It is. So we looked at Dan, everyone agreed it was time to go. We looked at Dan, me and Andrew looked at him and went, we're going now, mate. If you've got anything you want to say to us, say it now, because uh, we, we, we're going to leave, mate. And this is what Dan did. down to the bar and we hanged out with the hookers. There's like 10 of them sort of mulling around here. Yeah. We're standing there. We don't know what Dan's up to, but we're standing around the bar with all the hookers. And then five guys from London walk into the bar who are obviously out of their fucking <laughs> skulls on coke. Now, if you've never taken a lot of coke, then I have uh, If anyone's got any... <laughs> yeah. If, really? you, if you've never taken uh, coke, you know, when, when like five or six guys get together and take coke on like a Tuesday, <laughs> there comes a point at about six in the morning where we go, well, you better call up some chicks, uh, maybe, and you call up ex-girlfriends, like bring some friends, bring some friends. And it's like, I don't know what you're expecting. <laughs> so basically, these, I think it was a Wednesday we did this, and I, I think these guys have been on coke all night, and they've obviously gone, oh, okay, let's go down the brothel, we'll go down the brothel, it'll be fun, we'll go down the brothel. And I was standing at the bar chatting with all the hookers and these five guys from London walk in and one of them recognises me and goes, Jim fucking Jeffries, Jim fucking Jeffries. I oh, know you, mate. I oh, know you, the comedian, the, the spaz approved guy, spaz the comedian. Mm -hmm. And I went, hey, how you doing, man? He goes, hey, Jim, 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 Jim. Want a lot of coke? And I went, yes. <laughs> and I went up to the... I went up to the toilet and did a line of coke. And I come back out, and obviously I've left Andrew alone for too long. And he was sort of panicking all by him. Never leave alone someone, probably a social awkward in a more vulnerable, awkward place. Now, they were having literally a panic attack. Like, seriously. 
myself and I sort of walk in like what's going on <laughs> what's wrong and he goes what if we've done the wrong thing here what if, what if he's in there dying right now what if he stopped fucking breathing or what the fuck are his heart stopped what the fuck are we meant to do I said uh, not a problem not a problem um, <laughs> I'll resuscitate him and he said do you know how to do that I said no I don't but how hard can it be push push blow blow <laughs> Ironically, they, people learn how to resuscitate with the song Stay in Life, Stay in Life. Like, ha, 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 Stay in Life, Stay in Life. Which. That's, I haven't embellished that in the slightest. That's the exact thing I said to him. <laughs> push, push, blow, blow. <laughs> then the prostitute walks back in the room. It was with Dan. So I'm staying with the five Coke fiends. 10 prostitutes. She walks in the room. It's like that <laughs> moment in a movie where the needle on the record just sort of goes, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, and uh, everything stopped. And she walked in and she said, Well, <laughs> it's over. No, no, no. And me no, no, and Andrew no, no. in unison went, Is he dead? <laughs> <laughs> And her exact words were, oh, I didn't check that. Really now? So, me, Andrew, the five coke fiends, the ten hookers, we all run to the room. Now he's not dead. His chair is back in the upright position. His cock is still sitting up majestically, covered in jizz and spit. Oh, and for God. a man who an hour ago couldn't lift his eyelids, he was sitting there like this. <laughs> now you might be wondering why his eyelids were up like that yes let me explain something it wasn't through happiness <laughs> tell you something about myself i'm 33 years old i've been masturbating since i was 10 years old damn and in that time i have not missed a day Every single day I masturbate. Haven't missed a fucking day. Every day I'm in a hotel room with a laptop way high up on my chest here. Oh, God. So I don't have to look at the filth I'm doing. <laughs> Hold on, give me a second, guys. I have to plug in my laptop. Oh, uh, but still, though, that. <laughs> oh, Jim. Think to myself. So I'm watching porn here. And nine times out of ten, I hit the apple sign. Right? Oh. <laughs> and I do this every single fucking day. Yet I would be mortified if any one of you was to ever see me doing this. I would want to fucking kill myself. And I do this every single fucking day. Now imagine if... You've never ejaculated through the power of yourself. You've never had another person do it. You're 32 years old, and for the first time, you've shot a lot of the fucking stale jizz all over the fucking room. And you're sitting there with your cock out, and 15 strangers walks in. And you do not possess the power to put your cock away. <laughs> yeah. Can you see how that might be a bit unhinging? Very. So we had to get him dressed quickly. But there's cum everywhere. <laughs> and this time I look him up and down. And I turn to Andrew and said, Andrew, I don't give a fuck how fragile he is. I'm taking the top half this time. <laughs> and we lifted him up. And we put his pants on. And we proceeded to leave the brothel. Now, as we left the brothel, I turned to Dan. I said, Dan, I paid for a story. Please tell me what happened. And he said, well, she danced around a bit, rubbed her tits in my face, and sucked me off. Which is what I asked her to do. It's so nice to be a disabled sex puppeteer. <laughs> What? All right, that's a new one. But, but even, even nicer than that, I used to have a preconceived notion on what I thought about people such as prostitutes, man, but I was wrong. 
That woman treated him with dignity and respect mm -hmm. and made him feel like a sexual being for the only time in his life. And you can't put a price on that. All right? Well, 180, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Exact, the exact figure. <laughs> then we go up front and we go to call a taxi and the taxi driver who drove us there is still sitting out the front in his car and he winds his window down and looks out and goes, I'll drive you home for free. I just need to know what happened. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Good night. Good night. oh man, that's that that's a friend. That is a best friend. Like to do all that, even for a story that he's gonna tell. That's a friend, definitely to the max. The point that he told he told the told this and their actual names, like again, you, that's like, that's a friend. But a wild story. But anyway, <laughs> if you like any of this content, please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. Like, comment, and subscribe to Jim Jeffries. I will leave the original link to his uh, to this video down below in the description. You can watch it uninterrupted. Also, link to my Hell of a Boss reaction playlist. If I've been reacting to Hell of a Boss lately. Ooh, excuse me. So, y'all yeah, miss any of my reactions? Just go click the link onto the playlist, and it'll pop you right there. Uh, also, link to my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can follow me on those social platforms. Also, link to my Cash App. If you feel gracious enough to donate, $5, 10 $15. That's fine. You know, that's fine as well. Hit the super thanks if you want to donate there. All to make the channel grow. It'll let me know y'all really rock with your boy. But anyway, till next time, please take care of yourself. Stay hydrated. Stay safe. Stay warm. And peace out. Little questions is every